Beside me here is the Panama Canal, a truly amazing engineering feat. 80 kilometres long between the Atlantic and the Pacific, it's a corridor that transports huge amounts of coffee around the world. Completed in 1914, the Panama Canal opened vital trade routes with South America's previously unreachable Pacific coast, paving the way for the world's love affair with fine Arabica coffee from the region, Panama being no exception. Whilst Panama has not been able to compete in terms of scale of production in comparison to its neighbours Brazil and Colombia, it is made up for in quality of the cup. Specialising in varietals, in particular the Geisha strand, which is regularly voted amongst the top 10 coffees in the world. With its hundreds of different microclimates, Panama is today exploiting this market and in 2007, the most expensive conventionally harvest coffee in the world, La Esmeralda Geisha, sold for $170 a pound and recently fetched about $350 a pound. My Panamanian coffee trail begins in the heart of Geisha territory, starting in David, heading north to Boquete, and then on to Volcan Baru. This very distinctive terroir produces some of the finest coffee in the world, akin to Bordeaux and wine. The first port of call is Finca Lerida, a plantation that boasts a 23-room boutique hotel, which attracts coffee enthusiasts and bird watchers alike. So we've got, uh, we've got a fine selection of your best that are going to bring out notes of the different microclimates, perhaps the soils within those. Definitely. Slightly different altitudes. Definitely. And, uh, and of course we've got um, uh, a varietal of great repute, the geisha. Yes, and that, that's the beauty of Boquete. Uh, Boquete has uh, innumerable microclimates and conditions that are all different, so no one farm will will have a coffee that's alike uh, the other farm. I feel that sometimes varietals don't make regions, it's regions that really make a coffee, and we're in a privileged region here mm -hmm. yeah. in Alto Quiel and Finca Lerida. Yeah. Yeah. And we hope to prove that as we develop our farm mm -hmm. uh, with eight new varietals that we'll be planting. Yeah, this is the the, the, the deeper base coffee, body, rounded, lovely fruit. Whereas this one immediately, um, yeah, having that sweet and acidity and brightness to it. Yeah, exactly. Hacienda La Esmeralda is the producer of the world's renowned Esmeralda Special. Gesha was first discovered on this farm in 2004 and since then it has won 14 international competitions for excellence. Once a year, the Esmeralda Special is auctioned for those buyers who will settle for nothing but the best. In 1999, we planted a variety of coffee that we had uh, found in a really abandoned uh, coffee farm called Geisha. We planted it in uh, the, just the right setting for it to express these just wonderful attributes and it's just an overall very different uh, cup of coffee. We planted it in, in 1999. 2004 was the first time we had a bit of production to be able to cup it and put it into the Best of Panama which is a cupping event that uh, farmers in, in Panama work together to promote our coffees. Before 2004, we were consistently there near the, near the bottom, and we put it on the, the, the cupping. It came out in first place, and uh, every time it's been in the best of Panama, which has been from 2004 every year, except one year, it's, it's taken first place. Coming across the Geisha is an eye-opener for all of us in the coffee world. Keep in mind that the grand majority of the coffees that are drank today come from a very narrow genetic base, which is what left Ethiopia over a thousand years ago, was in Yemen for a couple hundred years, and then made its way out to the world. And from this very limited genetic pool is where most of us have been drinking coffee from where we've been producing. Go back to Ethiopia, go into the woods, and you will see a world of different varieties that we don't know what they taste like. So 
we found that uh, we were able to get 37 varietals that are mostly Ethiopian land races that we planted. They're, uh, genetically, they seem to be closer to, uh, to the geisha, and we're planting them with the hopes that uh, among these 37, there will be something else that will just uh, blow your socks off. You know? <laughs> A short drive from Esmeralda is Volcancito, the sub-region of the Boquete coffee growing area. Nestled high on the Baru Volcano is Mamakata. The family behind this plantation has such great passion for the Gesha coffee bean. My first passion is God, the second passion my wife, my third passion is Geisha within coffee, the Arabica species, yeah. Every year when we don't have one bean left, so it gets over to the next crop to have it again and when we have it, we're anxious like kids when, with a new ball or with a new toy. When we have Geisha again, Geisha's been drinking all over the, it's been drunk all over the world. We know what it is, but it leaves us for exportation and when it leaves us, we're sad. People all over the world are drinking it and it's taken away from us. Actually, we get paid for it, but we love it. There was a family concept of harvesting. I used to go harvest with friends when I was a small kid. People went around harvesting the tree, and I used to get up also on the top of the tree. The kids were hand-picking above the tree, sitting down on the tree, hand-picking there, and somebody got under the tree and picked under the tree, and there were people picking outside the tree. So one family, we used to pick the whole tree itself and get out like around 35 to 50 pounds of cherries from that single tree. You wanna get, you wanna get in the, underneath and see Yeah, let's get inside, it. cause it's so hot out here, my head's burning like barbecue. You cook a sausage on my head. Oh, oh good night, that's a wagger. Like I told you, man, this is like a house. <laughs> this is a this is a little teepee. This yeah. Is... You can hand pick the tree from underneath. And then, like the families used to do, pick it from outside and the kids will get on the top and pick on the top. It's not a tale, it's the truth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Standing in the old Panama City, looking over the water to the new city, reminded me of just how much the varietal revolution of Panama has changed the coffee trading world. So what is it that makes such a great cup of coffee? Well, we've seen back at the producer end the passion and care they need to put in to make that cherry develop into a seed that the roaster gets and then he does a great job and then the brewster does. But what's even more exciting about having these guys and their passion and care look after that is the varietal. I think that's where the new world is. It's taking us into a possible foreseeable future where we're going to taste not only geisha but bourbons and yellow bourbons and new varietals that have been tested and trialled now. It's a very exciting world of coffee and I can't wait for the years to come. <laughs>